you know what I was thinking? Unicellular organisms are amazing. A complete organism made of just a single cell. And this single cell does everything. Like respiration, movement, food intake, all by itself. It's kind of the jack of all trades. But in multicellular organisms, things work a little differently. Instead of a single cell doing everything, different cells do different things. Some cells would take care of respiration, some cells would take care of food uptake and so on. And according to the job, different cells have different designs. For instance, we all know what a typical plant cell looks like. Let's say this cell is present in the root. It has to specialize in absorbing water. What all design changes would help? First of all, the cell wall of a typical plant cell is too thick to let water pass through. So the cell wall has to be quite thin. This way, water and minerals can get in. Next, if we add a projection like this, it would increase the surface area for absorption. That way, more water can be absorbed. Organelles that are not needed by the cell can be removed. For example, this cell is present in the root. It's clear that it's present under the soil and won't perform photosynthesis. So we can remove all the chloroplasts. Since it's going to absorb lots of water, it makes sense to store the water somewhere, right? Which is why it has to have a large vacuum. The absorbed water and minerals can be stored in this vacuum. And that's what a root hair cell which is specialized to absorb water and minerals look like. Just like in our example, in all multicellular organisms, cells are modified to carry out a particular function. These cells are called the specialized cells. Sometimes these specialized cells work individually and perform a function. Sometimes many specialized cells come together, work as a team towards a common function. Such groups of cells which work together for a common function are called tissues. This word tissue was coined by Marie-Francoise Xavier Pichat, a French scientist and the first ever person to study tissues. Now that we know what tissue is, let's take a few examples to understand tissue better. This is the muscle tissue found in the walls of the heart. As you can see, even though the cells are not exactly the same, they look very similar. This is true for most tissues. I said most because not all the tissues have cells similar to each other. Some tissues might even have cells completely different types but that work towards the same function. Let me show you an example to make things more clear. This is the xylem tissue. It is a plant tissue responsible for transporting water from the root to other parts of the plant. It is made up of four types of cells, which look very different from each other. But since they work towards a common function, that is transport of water, they form a tissue. What's more interesting here is, three out of the four cell types are dead. So it really doesn't matter if cells in a tissue look similar or even alive. As long as a group of cells work towards a common function, we call it a tissue. That means, even though we commonly define tissue as a group of cells that are similar in structure and or work together to achieve a particular function. The most important thing in tissue is that all cells work together to achieve a common function. Okay, now that you know quite a bit about tissue, let me ask you a couple of questions. Question number one, our blood consists of many cells. Together, the cells are involved in circulating and delivering things that are needed for survival. So is blood a tissue? Of course it is. Some of you might have had doubts here. For one thing, cells in blood are not stuck to each other. Also, blood is a liquid. Can there be a liquid tissue? Just like it doesn't matter how many kinds of cells there are in tissue, it also doesn't matter if the cells in the tissue stick to each other or if the tissue is in the liquid form. As long as the cells stick together as a team and work towards a common function, they form a tissue. 
Okay, question number two. This is called the seminal fluid, secreted by the male sexual organ. As you can see, it has a lot of tiny tadpole-like things. These are nothing but sperm cells. The function of the sperm cell is to fertilize an egg. So, is seminal fluid a tissue? Well, actually, no. Let me explain. In our previous example, all the cells in the blood work together to transport materials in our body. But in seminal fluid, every sperm cell would individually work to fertilize the egg. We know only one sperm can fertilize one egg. So it is a competition among the sperm cells rather than a teamwork. But in tissues, the cells work as a team, which is why seminal fluid is not a tissue. We can take all day and explore more and more interesting things about tissues. But I think it's best I leave you to explore. Who knows? Maybe one day you might even dissect different tissues, put them under a microscope and study them. And that day, I would call you a histologist. Because that's who you would be, a histologist. Person who studies tissues using scientific tools like a microscope. And this guy, Marie-Francois Xavier Bichat, the person who coined the word tissues, is also the first ever histologist. So, he's called as the father of histology. Let's recap what we learned. In unicellular organisms, a single cell performs all cellular processes. In multicellular organisms, cells get modified to perform one particular function. These cells are called the specialized cells. When many such cells come together and work towards a common function, they form a tissue. Tissue is commonly defined as a group of cells that are similar in structure and or work together to achieve a particular function. The cells in a tissue can be of different types, but all cells should work towards a common function. The cells in the tissue do not have to be stuck to each other. Tissue can be in liquid form. Blood is one such tissue. All cells in a group may have the exact same function. But if the cells don't work together as a group, they don't form a tissue. For example, seminal fluid which consists of sperm cells does not form a tissue. A person who studies tissues using scientific tools like a microscope is called a histologist. Marie-Francois Xavier Bichat was the first histologist and the father of histology. He also coined the term tissues. With that, we come to the end of this video. I hope you understand what tissues are and how they work in multicellular organisms. See you soon.